vacuum tubes on satellites? <laughs> this, is, this is a great question. And um, no one actually asked this question, but uh, I try my best to meet with our engineers. And because of the pandemic, because of all this COVID stuff, you know, we can't really spend as much time as we normally do at the office and we can't go into the labs as much and we can't be together as much. We have to wear masks and it's a real pain. And so I've been um, just starting to, to meet outside, feel a little bit more comfortable. And as long as you're outside and you keep your distance and, there's, and you're not trapped inside, you can actually talk without a mask, especially if you think the person is, is, is safe and you know them. So with distance and being outside, it's all right to uh, speak with people that, that you know um, without a mask. And so I've been meeting with Darren Myers, our senior hardware engineer, in, well, restaurants and things. And I've taken along my little camera. Darren's a little camera shy, uh, and, but that's okay, because once we set up the little camera, uh, he forgets about it and he starts going. And he got to talking about vacuum tubes and satellites, and I thought I would share it with you. You know, have you ever wondered why, like, vacuum tubes are used today? Did you know that vacuum tubes are used today, actually? Well, I do know. Yeah. You roll my tubes. You roll your, personally? I personally roll it. Cool. But no, I mean, let's assume I didn't, though. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm just, you know, the, um, so, satellites and uh, microwaves even, they use uh, vacuum tubes still. Satellites too? Some satellites for transmission. Yeah. So one of the, one of the reasons is that the, um, so the input capacitance of a tube, whether it's this small or really large, is pretty small because it's a vacuum. And then also the, the input capacitance is very linear because you're, you've made kind of a perfect capacitor. It's like two plates and a vacuum. I mean, that's like a really, really great so linear capacitor. So high frequency performance is low intermodulation and low distortion at really high frequencies. Um, and so you're able to, to, uh, to drive that device at high power at high frequency. So tubes are really great for, for uh, RF use. Um, now, today we do have semiconductors finally that can um, do a lot of things that tubes can do but um, but they've just come into um, uh, an area where they're affordable so uh, microwaves now are starting to have uh, FET technology that's capable of this but a lot of these industries are driving class D technology it's not class D technology doesn't drive the industry of course um, it's as other industries uh, switch mode power supplies and uh, uh, you know uh, these kind of designs that are driving audio technology and the output stage uh, semiconductors are very uh, dependent on the overall quality of the amp and what frequencies you can switch. So I, I'm interested in, in DSD stuff using like the, um, just the latest GAN. Bat